All right. So I'm a bit uh, jarred at the moment because I don't have my headphones on and I realized I don't need to wear my friggin' headphones because I don't have any music going anymore. Um, let me just put on the fan. So this is going to be a bit of a noisy stream, I suppose. Jeez, that looks kind of bad. But we'll just see how that goes. I could actually put a noise gate on if anyone's complaining. But really, whoa, is that too loud? Gah, I should have done this sound check earlier. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Okay, I had a crappy headphone earlier and that worked fine. So, first thing today, we're going to get rid of this friggin' SSL chat thing. Right, that's just been causing nothing but issues. Um, I don't actually know why I have that. I should just be using a socket um, and connecting to the host. So let's, uh, oh yeah, I reset the taskbar last stream, of course. Okay, DOSBox, up you go. Um, DOSBox. Um, Okay. All right. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go over to our bot and we're going to just set the server address here to the actual address of the server, which would be 10.0.0.2. And we'll just see if that works. And if it works, then great. Um, that means we don't have to use slurps thing again. And that would actually make Wireshark debugging so much easier. So let's open up the Wireshark. Ignore all those errors because as we've learned, errors are useless. And let's check. I'll be checking to any device, I suppose. Okay. Failed to connect. Now, let's just start the server then. Come on. Oh, right, that's my actual password. This just has a password of password. Which I probably shouldn't be telling anyone. But at the same time, if I wanted security, I wouldn't have my password set to that. Okay, come on, bot. Nope. All right. So is this because I don't have slurp running? That would seem to be the case. Oops. That would also mean I need to restart DOSBox, which is a little bit of hell. All right. So let's go to dev bot, but failed to connect still. Now let's see what's happening. It's sending a reset. Um, so yes, I think that's our actual connection there. Um, six, 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 seven. So let's just check out the SSL chat thing. Okay, so maybe it's 127.0.7. Doesn't seem to be the case. comment this out because I'm 90% sure this isn't the case. Because, I mean, it might be. I don't know if DOS, if uh, MTCP is going to route this at all. Oh, it does. Okay, that's actually fairly weird. But good, because we can now see the actual... Uh, packets here. Um, there's no slurp data we have to look at. Um, let's reset. And do we see an actual finish? Yeah, here. Okay. See, 52960. Then if we follow the TCP stream there. Mm 
Man, this microphone stand is the shakiest thing in the world. Let's try that. Uh, Luray is currently streaming, so... Uh, I, I, is it weird to advertise your, someone else's stream? Um, on your own stream? I guess not. So, as we can see here, this is actually... I'm going to check the trace here and see if the eye dance... Um, are actually the same because if this is working better this means we can actually look at the actual packets without slurps debug getting over everything um i actually pressed page down a lot instead of g and i don't know why come on g there we go so just now the connection had ident of 60725 with port 4315. So that doesn't appear to be that. 4315 and ident 60723. So is this the actual connection? I think Slurp might still be tunneling it. Um, Let's just have a quick look here. So we would have that response notice here. Desk port 52690. And then we would have the ident 60093. Yeah, that's not it. I don't think. Oh well, but I think this gives us a better ability to look at the packets I think yeah because slurp would be tunnel well yeah slurp sounds like it's making the requests on behalf a bit like SoCap, but that's one less layer of indirection to debug um, let's just also check this out so where would the DOS box one be one two three four so this would actually be the slurp one. So we have the slurp one here and then we have that. So yeah, so no more SSL chat. If I want to do that, I can use something else. And I think this at least preserves the packets instead of cutting them up into a stream. Which brings me to today's topic. How, how the actual heck am I going to figure this out? Um, whether it's gonna pack multiple messages together in a single packet. Like, that's seriously something I will, I don't know, and it spooks me. So let's just search up TCP packets. Um, TCP packet aggregating. Uh, we also have to deal with IP fragmentation, I think. And I'm not sure if that's even going to be. Yeah, so apparently TCP does not care. It will aggregate it. Right. So, yeah, okay, so we also need to deal with IP fragmentation then because we might possibly have large packets. So let's head over here. Let's check out our MTCP configuration file. And do I have IP fragments on? Uh, okay, well... Let's just try compiling with this. And let's see if that actually... will destroy my life. Um, it would be in packet, I think. And then we'd search for frag. Uh, 
Uh, oh, that's not it. Um, it might be in here. Frag. Hello, Red Fox Creates. What's up? And I did mispronounce your name, but that's a good first impression, I suppose. All right. Nothing much. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm hoping I have enough space to do packet fragmentation, but we'll see. Hmm. I don't know how I'm going to test this. Uh, how am I going to deliberately... Does packet fragmentation even matter if I'm going to be using slurp? Hmm, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of questions here with not many answers. Okay, so that seems to still work. Yep. It actually closes faster now. I installed DOS on some real hardware the other day, four floppy disks and a lot of waiting later. I now have a very old notebook running DOS. Sweet. Does it connect to the internet? What have you got running on it? Anything cool? Let's check out the memory map of this just to see if it's eaten up all the space. That's not memory map. It would be bot.map. D510. So let's just plug that into. Ten kilobytes, sure. That's enough. I guess. I don't know. We'll see. You haven't tried anything with it yet, just needed something, and what better than DOS for a notebook with an integrated floppy drive? That's a fair point. Alright, so it looks like I'm actually going to have to do the actual original buffering as I did plan. I am confused as to why it's not actually using the proper address here. It had Windows ME when I got it, but it had to be wiped because, well, that's not my data. Yeah. Windows ME. Yeah, okay, let's check out Wireshark to see why that's not happening, because I kind of would like to run this on actual hardware one day. So if it's not actually routing it properly, then that is a problem. Although, uh, Slurp said something about this. Um, in fact, Slurp said a lot of things about this. So let's see. It had special IPs. Okay. None of this is useful to me, I don't think. It will assume that your local IP is 10.2.15. Redirect host port to local port. Um, okay, so slurp control telnet IP. So 10.0.2 is taken. What about 10.0 point? Let's just quickly look, see what's up. It does have an RJ45, so tomorrow I might see if I can get it to at least do something. Yeah, that sounds good. 10.0.2. Okay, let's try that. Oops. Wait, is that what I was using before? Oh yeah, no I wasn't. I was using 
I was using dot a hundred. All right, let's see. Okay, that's fine. Hundred and ten percent fine. RJ forty five. So that's like Ethernet, isn't it? Have you tried running FreeDOS? FreeDOS is pretty cool. Okay. Um, and let's also, I guess, try sending something whenever we get a packet. So if we get a packet, let's just uh, send it back. That'll be confusing, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, DOS C, and just look at the old code here. Should I be aggregating packets? Probably. But I'm not going to do that at the moment. Get xmint buff. Okay, so I just have to enqueue a buffer. Um, buff. Um, if buff dot equals null, uh, buff data. Can I just set the data to? Do I have to copy it to the buffer? Um, let's just do a quick check. I don't want to do many copies because that's going to waste my precious, precious CPU cycles. All right. Next min buff. What's this? Drive packets too. All right. Okay, so we actually do have X mint buffers, and so I think we should, yeah, actually copy to it. All right. But what is a TCP buffer anyway? Can I just set the pointer? Um, now I'm looking for headers. TCP buffer. Oh, it also has send packet. No, there's a private, so it would have to be in queue. Um, TCP buffer. Has a TCP buffer in it? What? Um, okay. So, where's it setting the data? Data buff. Get X mint buff. Oh! So the TP buffer is the global class. So get xmint buff, and that returns an xmint buffer. And that's a TCP buffer. Why does that turn into a data buff? Really? So that returns itself. The user only needs to fill in data len. And everything else is mentioned. Um, so those are static, so those are intended to be global, so you just fetch the buffer. Um, data len. Let's see. Add to receive buff. So let's check out tcp.h and look for data len. So we in queue, we have the buffer, and it has the data links there. Let's 
it sets up the buffer and it enqueues it. Users don't send buffers, they enqueue them. So, why is it turning it into a data buff? What is this code doing? Maybe it's in here. It might be in. I'll just grep for it actually. Um, so data buff is actually a custom thing. Okay. Data buff. Oh, someone's doing some chainsawing outside. I might have to close my window in a second. Depends on how long they're doing it. So they have their TCP buffer and then they have data. Got a chainsaw. It's always time to chainsaw. Um, so it it turns a TCP buffer into a data buffer, which contains a TCP buffer, and then there's data afterwards. So I'm imagining that there is actually just data allocated after it that I'm not seeing. Um, let's just see. XMIT buffer. So you have your XMIT buffers and you have your... Oh, that's right. I uh, statically allocated them. So let's actually see where that goes. Hmm. XMIT buffers equals TCB buffer temp plus buff size. Okay. So temp is a buffer. Wait, is this an actual... Is XMIT buffer... That's a pointer to a TCP buffer. So how is it allocated? That's what I should be asking first. Um, allocated XMIF buffer. So it allocates it into the big buff. There's eight buffers there, I think. I'm not sure what that means. Um, temp size equals XMIF buffs underscore P. What's that? That's the amount times buff size. And what's buff size? That's the size of a TCP buffer plus the MSS to advertise. What is that? That's probably somewhere else. But this is probably the answer I'm looking for, I think. Where does it set that? Uh, it would be in the socket manager. And that would be the MTU. All right. My MTU, what's my MTU? So that's the max packet size would be this, I think. So let me just see. So you have the size of a TCP buffer plus the size of your MTU minus the header. 
So let me just quickly trash that in there. And what is my MTU? Um, that would be, oh, but old actually does this max packet size, my MTU. So is that a global? It might be. So it sets the MTU there. Whoops. My MTU. Okay, so by default, it sets the MTU to something sane. Gotcha. And so the buffy here is the TCP buffer, and then after that, it just has a huge buffer. So what I'm going to do is find this data buffer, 1460. That sounds like what it actually is, but it's, hmm. What we're going to just do here, oops. Why is my keys sticking with DOSBox? Okay, so we're not gonna free that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get the TCP buffer. And if there is a buffer, then we're gonna do uint data equals, well, it would be after the TCP buffer. So unit underscore T um, buff plus one. I believe that would be it. Yeah, I think that's how pointers work. Although buff, okay, let's just set this to, we'll cast that to a buff and then we'll do the size of TCP buffer there. That seems like what should actually be going on there. Yeah, and then data is going to be my MTU and that would be So the maximum data in this buffer that I can put stuff in is geez, I've got so many things open. Right. My MTU minus size of IP header. Plus size of TCP header. Gotcha. Okay, that's line 82, so that's going a bit over the limit. Um, and then we have to set the data length. So in queuing, should set the data length. So the data length seems to be the payload length. So. Let's see, use the data len, because zero. So the data length would be Len mem copy. Great. How do I do a mem copy? Destination source size. So the destination would be data. The source would be user data. The size would be len. 
and then we didn't queue it. So it would be TCP socket dot and queue. Okay, so sock and queue data. I mean, uh, buff. So that should, wait, I didn't include string. Gotcha. I don't know why it wrote that there. Okay. Rand has not been declared, mem copy has not been declared. So if I just remove that and fix that up, does that fix it? Oh, it does? All right, whatever. Okay, so let's actually see what happened there with Wireshark. And hopefully it should just be echoing back what it's doing. So let's see, but connects and it echoes back. So response 451. Response notice. And then the request, let's just follow the stream. Yeah. I'm just telling that friggin IRC server who's boss, huh? Um, okay, so that works. We're sending off what we're getting in. And that's pretty cool. And it's just telling me that I'm not registered. Got it. That is pretty good, if I do say so myself. However, we don't have that many buffs, so we're probably going to have to try and slam multiple things in a single buffer, which I'll do a bit later. Um, so buff data length, length. That does include the new line, and that is actually an offset. And let's write the outgoing data actually. So that actually works as an echo server. Oops. That should be data. Oops, data. And let's just put data. So we're just gonna null string that, null truncate it, null escape it, I can't remember, null terminate it. That's interesting. Outgoing. What? What's happened here? And it's not printing out everything there. So something's happened here. Outgoing is not printing the proper buffer or it's not copying it. And that's because I didn't copy it before I did that. Uh, rookie mistake, I guess. I don't know. Shouldn't read from... There we go. Uninitialized memory. Ta-da. Great. So we've made a copy bot. And what I might actually do is just kill that for now. Where am I running as root? Stop. Um, and let's just connect to that and we'll see how we go with this. 
test ding what's up um, as you can see this is actually using a cooked line buffer And that works reasonably well, actually. Like, I'm surprised. So, we have sending and receiving prototyped. What next? Well, let's see. I really should clean up a lot of this code. But I have to think about the overall structure now. So we're going to have to have... some buffers. I think... I'm not sure how this is going to work. I think we're going to need two buffers and they're just going to be for split lines. So if there's a line split, we'll copy it into a buffer and pass that. So to demonstrate, let's just say we have TCP1, sorry, I'll just write some packets, so packet1 hello there, and then we have the new line, packet two, hello there two, new line, and we can just pass those directly to the code, and then we want to go, let's make these in packets, and then we want the out packet, and we can just write directly to the out buffer, that's fine. And so, we have enough space there but if we need if um, what I suppose would actually happen here is that we want to put this in multiple like we want to join these packets together to save space because we only have eight output packets so what we would do is join them together like that and also be able to read it together like that However, oops, there should be a new line there. Um, we might run out of room. So if we have an incoming packet and it's split, like split, we're gonna have to buffer that ourselves. And that's the same with the outgoing packet. So we're gonna have to have two buffers. Um, most recent uh, two buffers so in buffer one would be um, raw packet contents in buffer two split line buffer and with the out buffer we would have this um, set to yeah, x mint buffer, and then we have a split line buffer if we go over the x mint buffer. Actually, yeah, but when we're sending it out, we would actually just no, we jump to the next buffer if we need to split it. So x mint buffer and ran full flush. Alright, so we'd have three buffers and these two are provided by MTCP and this would be ours. So the first thing I want to do is kind of make this actually happen. So um, let's just open up as root again. So what is the actual size um, 1490, okay, the size of an IP header, 
whatever, I'll just set the MTU to something like 64 bytes. And then we'll try and kick this a bit to see what happens. My MTU, right, that's a capital, gotcha. So this should be fine. And that should allow us to like go test. But if I send something long, we should be able to cut it. I'm fairly sure that it's not doing it properly. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, that split it into two packets. So but the outgoing didn't happen. Why didn't that happen? Did we not have an outgoing buffer? Hmm. In fact, I know that the reason that it's on the same line is because it doesn't terminate with a new line. Um, but we don't have an xmit buffer in this case. And that is a problem. Let's just quickly write the output of the uh, value there. So are these overlapping? Um, I might actually just cut down the MTU size a bit more just to uh, 32. Let's see how that goes. Z. Okay, and then let's add a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. Right, so that's still a pretty big buffer. Did I set that right? Was it an, an invalid size? Yeah, I must have set that wrong. Um, let's try just, I don't know, 55, because I've seen that used before. And let's pull up Wireshark. Oops, any please. So let's see. Yep, and two of those. Okay, so we see here that it gets cut off. Actually, let's just try splitting it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that should be on the line. Nope. There we go. 
So now we have a split packet. And when we have a split packet, it's not able to send anything. So we might actually need our own buffer for outgoing stuff. Um, which isn't good. I wish we could reserve it. So let's look at the actual packets here. Length 73. I guess on the slurp end, it's getting cut up. That's okay though, I don't really care. So once we get that, it returns an acknowledgement. Some data, that's to slurp. Small data, let's look at this TCP stream a bit more closely actually. So it tries to send out A A A A B B B B. Okay, yeah. So setting the MTU and slurp will cut up the packet for us. Um, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, at least we get to test it. Packets hap packet cutting is happening at slurp. So why don't I have any XMIT buffs when this happens? What if I send a larger packet with three. Um, actually, let's just half that. How many is that? Oops, I changed the wrong window on my computer. Seventy-three. So we'll just half of seventy-two, thirty-six. So we'll just do the current MTU 64 minus 36 is 28. Yeah, that didn't go well before, so I'm just going to ignore that. A, B, B, B. So the max packet size here um, is 61. So if we just copy and paste that three times, one, two, three, four. So does that get us multiple ones at once? Oh yeah, I'm sending a new line as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Alright, so... That makes sense. So TCP is character oriented and we can just accept an infinite amount of data incoming. So when we get incoming data we want to process it. That's fine. Um, sometimes we may have to buffer it. Should we always buffer it? Can we even... No, we can tell when a command's complete by seeing the new line, but... I really don't want to buffer it. Although, if we always buffer input and output, then the code paths will be a lot easier to debug. I just want to know why we're not actually having um, an output buffer there. So can I not use an output buffer if I have queued packets? Could it be that I'm not freeing the buffer? No. Let's just try again with uh, this one. Huh. So it actually does work there. Copy. Do we... So is it because I'm not freeing the buffer? Hey Mingriff! Um, yes, I'm still messing with fragmented packets. Um, because in DOS, 
you have to handle this because I also kind of are in the TCP IP stack. And I'm not freeing something here. Once I enqueue it, it needs to get freed. But it's not doing that. Um, so what I've figured out is basically I should be fine. I can process fragmented incoming packets, but I will just need a buffer for each line. Um, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Specifically, I need a buffer for when it splits across packets. I could just drop those. That'd be fine, I guess. Um, and output, uh, output buffering. I'm going to need a place to write stuff and read stuff. So I might just have a line, for, um, a line buffer for incoming and outgoing. That might be my best bet. Because I can't really calculate ahead of time the space I need. And I don't want to overflow the output buffer. So that's going to be a copy here. A copy out and a copy in. And that seems fine. I can live with that. So I just need to figure out why this isn't being freed. Um, so hopefully I'll have line buffering done today and I can start writing the bot and get out of this, this hell, this horrible, horrible place. Um, so what happens when we enqueue it? That's not how you spell it. Enqueue. And Q. If free packet. I feel like I need to free the buffer. So let's just check how the reference code I was using from before handles this. This isn't it. That's the good code. Um, and it's going to be in bot old or something. Okay. So when we output, we're going to enqueue it. And I guess while there's bytes to send, I guess okay so let's just assume that that's based on it and queuing it so let's head on back to the bot here and we'll grab all this and shove it there and we'll see what happens over here A lot of traffic. Is this running? Let me try again. Ah, oh, it's using a specific stream. Okay. Um, so let's say they're all sent. No, it still doesn't have the outgoing buffer. So why is it not freeing them? Please free my packets. What actually happens when it enqueue? It obviously doesn't get sent right away, so it's still going to be there. It's just enqueuing it. Enqueue, and that will return.
pending outgoing. What what does that do? So if it can't enqueue it, it sets pending outgoing. Is that useful? So when it sends it, it dequeues it. Clear queues. Yep. Oh, so the in queue is zero if good, negative one if bad. So let's actually see what happens when we run get x min buff. So it will have to return it at some point. So when it sends the packet, it returns it. So it's not sending the packet. Is it because I'm trying to send a packet that's too big? What, what's up? Um, let's just delete the trace file and we'll see what's up here. Oops, netcat that, reset this, and let's see. But, um, hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world. So that managed to send a few packets. Um, and that sends the incoming and outgoing. Incoming and outgoing. Incoming. And it isn't able to send that. And then since then it can't actually. So something happens. It gets a buffer. It doesn't send it here. I don't actually see it sending the very long ones. It sends the short ones, but not the very long ones. And that's interesting. Because that would make sense then. If it can't send the big ones, then it can't send the short ones. So which one didn't it send? It didn't send one, two, so we only have two buffers for packets, and that's okay. So let's have a look at why it didn't send that. I'm guessing that it's because of the size. Uh, we should also be able to verify it by looking at the TCP stream. Yeah, so it was not able to send that. Um, if we look at the slurp stream, um, oops, there should be the slurp stream here. We should see it break it down. And it is not able to send it outgoing. And I'm guessing this is an MTU issue, which means I'm calculating the packet size wrong. Um, that's not good. But before I go on some wild guessing, let's just check out the trace. You can't detect the character encoding. It's UDF-8. It's not using it. It's, it's Western then. Fine. Whatever. Okay. Process, process, received, received. Sending 54, sending 66. Sending 54, sending 66. 
Um, length of 100 there. Try to enqueue oversized segment. Okay. That's a... Is that a warning? Okay, so if it fails, I'm not actually returning the correct... The, I'm not actually using the buffer, am I? That makes sense. So I'm grabbing the buffer and I'm not checking if it is able to enqueue it. I'm just assuming that it does. And then I just have this buffer that I'm not using. Okay. So what's the maximum in Q size? Let's figure that out. Well, I should probably get the maximum in Q size at runtime, shouldn't I? I should probably figure out When we send this SYN, we advertise our maximum size. If we receive a SYN, we note the sender's MSS. If it's not specified, use the default of 536. 536 bytes of data plus 20 bytes of TCP header and 20 bytes of IP. Remote MSS. So we're actually trying to send more than our MSS. Okay. Why? Length equals negative 13309. Sending 54 bytes. Bytes. So we get this payload length, and let's just get. I need to cons convert that to an unsigned character because this debugging text is not helpful. Um, we have a payload length. Hmm. just to have a little inspection of the code. So what is the length here? IP payload minus TCP get... Okay, so the length here actually includes... Hmm, this is a problem. Oh no, that is the correct length of the payload and it does terminate it properly so we have our max data here data land Let's just add some um, test code. So if that fails, which it will, we're going to print out the max data and the remote message sizes and stuff. Um, so max data, it's an unsigned integer, so we put a U there. I'm going to use three printfs because this is test code and it doesn't matter. Uh, my MTU. Um, 
and I think it would be remote MSS. And I think that should be fine. Let's just see. Yeah, max and Q size. Can I get the max and Q size? Is that a public thing? Can I just? Max and Q size. Okay, so that's public. So let's print out the remote MSS uh, max and Q size. We should also print out the data length here. And max and Q size. Buffer max and Q. Um, max and Q size. And what else do we have? We have the MSS stuff. And that is somewhere TCP socket manager MSS to advertise. So let's just do MSS to advertise and that's TCP socket manager MSS to advertise okay let's see if that compiles syntax error line 39 Oh, sorry, 53. Um, and that is because that's there. Sorry, it should be doesn't equal that. And I spelled socket manager with a capital there. So if it doesn't equal zero, Actually, you know what, let's just make this an unconditional print. Also, yes, I ignored an error there because I got distracted. Remote MSS and max in queue size has not been declared as a member. Oh, okay, so that's actually on the socket. That would make sense because different sockets will have um, different responses to this. While we just have one socket. Okay, fine, socket it should be sock. Oh crap, that now I just have an else laying around, I think. Why is there an else there? Okay. So that should actually just be not even there. Um, that should just be um, here. Okay, have I got me netcat set up? Um, but, all right, test. So we have a data length of five, that includes the new line. Maximum data is 15. So I can actually only output 15 bytes, huh? Max and Q size is 15, and the MSS to advertise is 15. So, um, but our MTU is 55 
and 55 minus 40, which is the IP and TCP header, is in fact 15, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, with the new line, should be 15. And that is able to output it. Now if I add an extra 2, um, so that would be a B and a new line. Are we able to... So the data length is 16. So that is not the maximum input data. The remote MSS is 1460. Okay. So let's go and scroll up here and just copy and paste this example that we tried before. So let's see, we have the incoming AAA and we have the outgoing. So the outgoing has max data, data length of 60, and that goes out fine. Even though max and queue size is 15 and MSS to advertise is 15. However, with BBB, we're doing 13, 15, Hmm. I think I'm overriding the buffer, the next buffer. Possibly. I'm copying the data regardless of the actual output. However, how am I getting the MTU? If I have an MTU of 55, then how come I'm getting packets in bigger than 15? So I don't understand something here. Supposedly, the MTU is 55. Perhaps I'm calculating it wrong and it's not 15 max, it's 50, oh, excuse me, 55. So let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's only 60. We're actually only getting 60 in. Interesting. Why would that be? Why am I able to take a packet in that's a length of 60 when my MTU is 55. So let's see. Um, I have like two problems here. I don't understand the MTU thing. I'm adver advertising an MTU of 55 and getting a packet that is 60 bytes. Let's calculate that. So 60 plus 10 for IP plus 10. That's 80. So that's the packet size, but we also need the Ethernet header size. Um, okay, IP header size should be 20 bytes. as small as 20 bytes. 14th optional header, so let's say 20. Um, TCP header, is that 20 bytes? I'll say so. And the ethernet header, how big is that? Um, Oh, 
octets. Um, minimum payload is 42 octets. I would say an octet is a byte, so 42 bytes. Ethernet frame, 42 bytes. Six bytes for the, each of the destination and two. Uh, 64 bytes at minimum. That's 144. Oh, these should be 20. 164. That's interesting because I've written 64 here in my code, my bot code. I don't know, 55, I wrote 55 there. So this just makes no sense. However, we're going to get to the bottom of this, don't worry. Um, so let's grep for my MTU. Oops. So TCP has an MSS and Ethernet has an MTU, I think. Hmm. That doesn't make sense. I thought MTU was an IP thing. Minimum MTU for Ethernet is 46. Maximum is 1500. So 46. Why would it be 46? I wrote 46 before, so let's just search this up. Is an MTU without the uh, the payload? So maximum size, so we'd have to have a minimum size. Ethernet adds an overhead of 18 bytes. All right, so 18. And an IP4 packet would be 18 plus the size of the packet. Minimum size, please. So, we have 18 for Ethernet. 
and let's say we have 20 for IP, that's 38, and we have 20 for 40, and then that would be 58 as the minimum MTU. Yet, is that what this actually is? That's like the actual minimum. Oh, 576. So let's just see. 46. 58. 46. 38. 46. 40. Is that wrong? MTU of 58. Okay, Google, you win. What is the... What is the minimum uh, M tier? Sixty eight. So you have sixty eight, forty six and 58. Well, this is kind of... So that's like by standard. Okay, why? So it has to be 576 at minimum. So I'm actually being non-standard here. The biggest possible IP header is 60 bytes and the smallest is eight, the payload is eight bytes. So, I don't know what's going on here. I think I've got off track. And I'm going to have to just quickly go back to Google because I saw something useful. And I'm going to have to look here. So... The MTU is not being helpful. I've set my MTU to 55. I'll put it to 68 and that should give me like a small payload. Let's see. Copy this again. And that's able to handle all of that. But before it wasn't able to. What's sixty eight plus twenty eight? Ninety six. So Maybe the maximum is 96 for this. 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Whoops. No. Let's just do a netcat. Listen. 
start the bot up again. Seven, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's a hundred whatevers. And that works. So, why? Um, I can't actually see what Slurp is saying. Let's have a look at the trace then, huh? And then let's view the trace and see what it's telling me. Received 1,155 uh, bytes. Okay, so that would be that being 101 and 55, so 54 for the packet. And that seems kind of reasonable. So when we receive a packet, it has a length of 44 and a head length of 20. Oh, that might just be the connection. Yeah, so we connect here. We get one with... a hundred... and fifty-five... Okay. All right. We're getting a packet and it is 101 um, bytes, even though the payload length is ruined there. And we're able to take that. And why is that? Is it possibly because we have a window of 112? Is that what it is? That could be it. MTU is 68, MSS is 28. 68 plus 28, what's that? It's not 112, is it? 96. Uh, did I just turn on syntax highlighting? No thanks. Alright. MTU and MSS and window 112. So if we add 11 things, would that give us like an overflow? So that's 101. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that shouldn't go over. But if I add one, that might fragment. Uh, sorry, if I add two, that might actually fragment it. So Yes, okay, so the TCP window is frigging weird. Why is it not the MTU? Is it just programmed to be okay with this? All right, remote window equals a zero. Um, okay. 166 bytes. Wait, 155. Window, 112. All 
Okay, let's just search up TCP window and work backwards from there because we have something that correlates with how much it can split. Um, okay, so... Received 166, then 54. Can I refresh that? So if we do that, what's the latest ident? 34. So let's go down to 34. Then we get 166, then 60. If payload length 1, payload length 112. And the IP packet length is 152. And 152 minus 160, oops. 166 minus 152 is 14, and I think that would be the something size. Whatever, we're advertising my win, so let's find out what that is. My win is win size. Receive buff size. Okay, we don't have that. Um, and we have MSS to advertise shifted by two. What? So we send a packet out, that's sending a packet, and we note our available window size. Okay, let's look at receiving a packet. Uh, I can spell, I swear. Receive packet. Process, this would probably be it. Bad checksum. Um, the size might actually be handled in IP. So what happens? Um, fragments. So if I actually disable fragments, will that... That should undo it, right? This is an issue of fragments. It's being fragmented. It's being fragmented. So the TCP windows. Okay. All right, so the fragmenting, is that creating a TCP packet with additional data? So it's not two TCP packets, it's going to end up as one. And that's why it can go past the MTU.
and so what we're actually limited by is our TCP buffer size and the fragmentation is transparent. Okay. So with packet fragmentation it's only limited by the TCP size I think not the MTU. So I am able to send and receive TCP packets, packets bigger than the MTU because they get fragmented. Okay. So what is determining our packet size. Let's see, our MSS is 28, then times that by 2, and that gets 112. So our MSS is a fourth of the actual max packets. Okay, I hate this. I hate this so much. So TCP segments are over multiple. So in the trace that I have, I should be setting my MSS to something sane. My MSS is 28. And my window is 112. Does TCP handle fragmentation by itself? That's a question I have right now. Do we have two systems of fragmentation and I just don't understand? Let's figure this out by disabling IP fragmentation. It wouldn't be joining it into a single packet, would it? I don't think that's what's happening here, because we do have like the actual packets. And we are getting it into packets. But is that fragmentation done by the TCP layer? Or the IP layer? Let's see. 
let's fire this up. Okay, so it is actually IP fragmentation. Making two packets. Uh, I wish we had like an actual Wireshark for this instead of just stupid slurp. Okay, so it's being fragmented. Here. Is it? It looks like it might actually not be. Um, let's just do that. Um, and then that, just something that doesn't actually repeat. Okay. Yeah, so IP fragmentation is not actually an issue here because TCP will fragment the packets, as we can see here. Mm. Okay. So that makes sense. If TCP is not packet based, then it can actually just fragment it as much as it wants. and not have to deal with IP fragmentation. So each side is able to see, oops, see the correct amount of fragmentation. That didn't mean anything, did it? Okay, so the second question is that it's not the IP being fragmented here because TCP is fragmenting itself and that's good. That means that over very tight links with a very s small MTU I mean that still doesn't explain why it has really large packets. Why? Why does it have them? Okay, yeah, so the MTU is small. Um, the MSS to advertise is 28. My MTU is 68. And that's better. All right, if you have your MTU... I mean, the MTU, that doesn't include the Ethernet frame, does it? Because if we do that... We do that. We remove the IP frame and the TCP frame. We get 28, which is exactly what the max data is and the max in queue size is. So that would be the maximum payload length. So how are we feeding more of that into here? How do we have more than 28 bytes incoming? How is that happening? OK, 
Okay, let me just search up this MTU. MTU include Ethernet frame. I don't think so. Okay. So the MTU is the stuff inside the Ethernet frame, which should mean that it makes sense that 28 would be the largest IP payload that I can take. But we're getting more than that. Now, why is that? Let's go back to the drawing board a little bit. Oops, connect. And let's shove this back in. Incoming, outgoing, incoming, outgoing, maximum data. That's correct. So why am I getting 112? 112, I should not be getting 112. 112 minus my MTU is 68, but my window is being set to 112. And I think that might be the issue. So what I might do, is go to the wind size. What MSS to advertise is 28. So what am I using the window size for? I think that's the actual core issue here. This is unfragmenting packet data. For window stuff. So we're going to have to search that up. But how does it get it if there's not, hmm, I have to check this trace. This, the trace will save me. I can feel it. So, receiving 166 bytes. First of all, no. No, 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 no. How does it receive that? Can we receive more than the MTU? Is the MTU our output? Maximum transition. So is MTU receive size? It seems like it should be. How can the packet size be greater than MTU? Explain this to me, please. Oh, I'm so, I'm so mad. Okay, let's check out this packet code. 
you're receiving a packet larger than your MTU without fragments. How? Size is. Are you concatenating it? What? Where's the trace? Um, let's see. Dumping at 166. So here we go. We, pa we process a packet. We receive packet LAN. Buffer lane, buffer first. What is buffer lane? So, packet buffers. Packet buffer length. What's packet buffer length? What did I set that to? The size of each co incoming buffer. Okay. So what if we set that to 68? Um, so if our packet buffer length um, what did I do there? So that's actually 15, 14 times 4, 6056 plus 8. So we're going to actually do packet buff. We're going to change this to be based on this. Packet buffers times packet buffer len plus eight. All right, let's cancel this out, please. I guess not. Um, So we receive the buffer. It will drop packets if it's greater than packet buffer length. So that's the issue there. We're accepting an arbitrarily long packet unrelated to the MTU. And because of that, we're able to receive stuff bigger than the MTU. Packet bus. Packet buffers. So if we set it to equal to the MTU, then we should see it work properly. Oops, and let's try setting this. No. Wait. Maybe. Did I make clean it? 
let's try that and let's just check that I actually saved that so MTU doesn't actually decide if we drop the packet Yeah, so it doesn't actually matter at all. But shouldn't the Ethernet layer drop it? That would be in the driver, wouldn't it? Right, so the driver... The driver should know the MTU, shouldn't it? The packet driver? Or shouldn't we get the MTU from the driver? Hang on. Um, DOS packet driver, since that's handling the Ethernet layer. Look at using a packet driver. What's the interface? interface. Um, I don't see an interface there. Using it packet driver, packet drivers. Here we go. Um, let's just check that out on the Internet Archive if it's gone forever. Do -do -do. Yes, I've donated to the Internet Archive. You should too, if... I don't know. You like having the Internet exist? Okay. I didn't set it to search the archived websites. Um, okay, let's see what's up on this page. I don't think it matters what time we check because... Okay, so we identify it, we initiate it. Programming interface. Entry conditions, so driver info. Um, I'll look at that in a minute, but let's just test the bot thing. No bot, bot please. And this should have much smaller packets. Or, uh, crash. I guess, what? Okay. Why? What if I just do a small one? Okay. A. Yep. A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, Z. Um, 7890. Okay, so... That's much more than the 28. But does 26 work? Let's just see what's going to happen. That's 26. And that doesn't work. So, evidently I've messed up in my calculations. We have four packet buffers and their length 68. Does, that doesn't include Ethernet, does it? So, 
Let's set that to just 100 then. Oh wait, 68 plus, I don't know what the ethernet size is. Let's just say it's gonna be smaller than that then. It's not splitting, which is a little bit worrying. So let's just do this. Let's put that always on top at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that doesn't work because that's twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So has that frozen or something? Something's up there. Obviously not anything good. Um, let's just pop that up to a hundred then. And let me check my math here. Packet buffer length. So let's see, access type, release type, send packet, terminate, reset interface, get parameters. So we can get the MTU from the driver perhaps, including MAC headers, what? Okay, whatever. Um, I guess we just don't do that. Maybe my driver doesn't support it. Whatever. It didn't close the socket either. A little bit worrying. But I believe we have some kind of memory safety. Um, simply because I'm not switching to any other segments. And the program code is not in the same place as the data. LAPS, ticks, and TCP. Okay. And if this changes behavior a bit, ideally I want a buffer that's smaller than my actual TCP max window size. Okay. Let's do some net cutting. Let's use 20 there, 40, 60, 60 doesn't work. Okay, that's fine. I'm sure it just drops it or something. So 28, that would be there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. And 
and if I set my window size appropriately, that should split. So let's just go over here and look for our window size. Um, and let's just not shift that, huh? And we'll see if that explains how this works. Um, no. White. So, I'm advertising a message size of 28. And it's still sent it's not splitting it properly. Should it be even splitting it? I don't know. You would think that it would. Because apparently I'm in this weird hell. All right, so let's try sending something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven. So it's a size eight. And then if we put something after it, it should split. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um. I'm not exactly sure why that's happening. Because before it was splitting according to the MSS. But now it's not. So what I'm actually going to do is head on over to the packet stuff over here. And then just do W make. I'm sorry. And then just check if it Use that. And now let's try it. Because for some reason, I still don't understand why it's splitting it. Copy, paste. And I don't understand why it's freezing when I get too large a packet. Sixty. Hundred and twelve. So it's still setting it to a hundred and twelve. Am I sure that's what the actual thing is here? Oh, that's for the old source code for the bot. Okay. I want to go to this file. Um, let's just set that to zero.
And let's see. Oh snap, I'm being raided. Hey Coz. Hey Luray. Did you have fun without me? Yes, that is the number six cause. This is possibly the most boring thing you could raid to. I'm sorry. Mental breakdown? Sweet. Is that a VOD? Or did you delete it? Okay, so... That's how the... Okay. So what even is the point? Okay, alright. So that's how TCP splits packets. Um, if you're just joining me, then you've seen, you've missed about two hours of me trying to figure out how TCP splits packets. Um, it's been an enlightening journey. Did I figure it out? Yeah, all right, so it might be best to explain it now. I also have to figure out why it freezes when I don't have a large buffer. Okay, so th this is kind of weird, this code. Because, um, so when you network something, you have your Ethernet frames and you have your maximum trans transmission unit or something in bytes that says how much you can pack in an Ethernet frame across a link. And that's basically the, the bandwidth that you have for um, any packet you're sending across Ethernet. So then you have your IP frame, and if you have an IP frame, um, then your maximum transmission unit is probably going to be like an IP frame plus a TCP packet, and that's like six plus like a payload of four or something, and that's like sixty-eight bytes. Fine then. Um, but I'm using MTCP, and it has an interesting feature where it will accept packets larger than the uh, MTU. Um, and I'm not sure why this isn't advertising that it has a small MTU. Something something liberal with what you receive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it also turns out that TCP has a kind of window size where it will send data to that size window. So you see how I have all these this long line of junk here. If I send that to my um, packet setup that only has like an MTU of 68 bytes. It can only take 68 byte packets um, which is like the minimum. So we'll see how this goes. But in theory this should just be split up, not by the IP layer, not by the Ethernet layer, but by the TCP layer. And it froze. So much hate. Um, I'll just do a quick check for that. Yeah. Did you notice how I said should? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So my maximum data here is twenty-eight. So it should be splitting it into twenty-eight things. So this here should be split into two packets. So if we do that, and it's not. Um and I don't know why that is. Uh I'm not sure if it's because, well, I'm trying to figure that out. It should be splitting that. T 
TCP splits it based on the NQ size, uh, sorry, the um, MSS size, uh, but this isn't splitting it. So let's try again. Let's go with that. Let's paste that in and see what happens with the trace. I'll just do, whoops, my keys are sticking uh, with my VM software. Um, so that doesn't work. Um, and I think it's because I possibly just did bad math. Because I think 68 is not actually the correct size packet I need. Although I'm not sure. I'm going to look at the trace test uh, thing. I'm not sure about anything anymore, actually. I feel like I've just been wrong about everything I know. Okay, so my MTU is 68, my MSS is 28. I get a 58 byte packet. It says 60 bytes. I don't know why. Um, it has... It sets the remote MSS is zero. It sends back its, sorry, packets back and it connects. And then nothing happens. Um, and I'm not sure why this is, because it would seem like it should process packets, but it's not. So I'm actually just going to do the smart thing here and brute force it and see what's up. Because what I want to do is I want to get the MSS the size of a packet and then see if it splits. Just to confirm that what I think is right is right. So let's do this. But, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, 16 is too high. It sh shouldn't be that. It should be something else. Oops. Um, but it's not. So obviously I've like misjudged something terribly. Um, let me just head back over here. Because the packet size, it doesn't say if there's an overhead or not. Size of each incoming buffer. Whatever, we'll figure out, we'll figure this out. This is fine. Um, actually, I'll just lower the M to you. That's what I'll do. So 10 works, um, so the maximum data, my MTU now is 68. Uh, I really should just check how high it can go. Okay, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, okay, so 14, okay, so we just need to add 14 to the packet line um, size, so 68 plus 14 is 82, I'll just put plus 14 there. That would make sense, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I'm really curious as to why dropping packets causes it to stop. And if this is a problem that I should probably investigate. Open WRT is doing your head in. Why is that cause?
It has end curses, no tick, which means you can't SSH in. What are you talking about? I can SSH into my open WRT TM and just fine. What are you doing? How did you break it? Are you using a custom terminal? What? I don't know why I'm a kitty. Um, have you tried setting your term variable to something like term equals x term? Have you tried setting your x term? Your term variable. Alright. Yeah, try setting your term value and just see how that goes. So, is this going to work? Yeah, but then if I do it again, yeah. Ah. Ah. Oh. Look, cause. Look. Look. Look, Dad. Please. Ah. Uh. Oh. You see and approve. Okay. I made it work. I'm crying. Oh, oh. Oh, I mean, look at this. I can just type any long string of bytes or anything. Anything. Absolutely anything. And it'll... It'll not only get it, but it will send it back. And it does this by fragmenting it into TCP stuff. And... I feel like I need to write down how it does because this is something I definitely will forget. Um, setting it to X term does nothing. Did you try exporting it before running SSH? Yeah, I'll... Uh, I don't know. I'll put a big warning at the top of my bot. Um... Big warning. Um, MTCP will take in a packets larger than its MTU. Um, but it won't. output packets larger than its MTU. Um, for TCP IP fragmentation doesn't matter. Um, packets will be fragmented end to end. Packets will be fragmented end to end depending on the window size. By default, MTCP's window size is, and I don't understand this at all, four times the MTU. I don't get this. I don't, I really don't get this. Why is it four times the MTU? Magic? Four times the MTU. I mean, that's, that seems wrong, right? Um, let me just search this up. TCP window size. Yeah, so the window size is the maximum TCP size you can take. And by default, MTCP will helpfully set it to four times 
Why? Why would it do that? Now, I'm pretty sure that it's to do with this. Um, I mean, why is the buffer... The buffer size is set to the uh, MSS to advertise. So I don't know why that is. That seems like a bug to me. Um, a lot of this code is cursed. And I'm not sure if it's a good thing. What should MS size to advertise be? So what's MSS versus M window size? Maximum segment size. So why is it setting the window size to be larger than the M... Uh, let me write this down. Four times the MTU. Well, it can't cache or buffer it because it's getting packets in that are too big. Is it an error to send? Is it an error to have the maximum segment size? larger than the window. Okay, TCP window scale option. TCP window scale is an option to increase the receive window. Uh, am I busy making myself a legendary low level network hacker here? No. Okay, so what is the intention here? Sender receives an ACK, which acknowledges byte 4000, specifies a receive window of 10,000. The sender will not send packets after byte 14,000. So, the actual size here makes sense, right? The window size should actually be like if you think about it a different way, you should be like the number of packets that um, I'm willing to get in advance. Um, let's see. TCP window size versus TCP. Yeah, like the look ahead. To avoid sending so many acts. It's like, alright, you send me this many bytes and I'll only act every four times that. But it's never supposed to send bigger than an MSS. So I'm starting to wonder if this is a slurp problem. The receive window defines how much data can be sent before being acknowledged by the sender. So it's only to do with acknowledgement. 
And this is a freaking slurp problem. Why are you sending me packets that are too... Okay, so time to dig into the slurp code. Let's find where I put that thing there. So, okay, MTCP, you're good. You have a RAID 6. Nice. I have a one terabyte hard drive zip tied suspended because it rattles too much if I screw it into the case. Okay, let's dive into what Slurp's doing. So let me just figure out here. MTCP would take in packets larger than its MTUs, but it won't out packets. For TCP, IP, fragmented, packet fragmented, and end depending on, on that. MSS. So what I think is happening here is Slurp is accidentally setting the MSS, uh, the window size and the MSS to the same thing. And it's like, oh, I'll just send you window size. And not going to lie, MTCP, you're not very helpful here because, I mean, fair enough. Because with Slurp and the serial cable and stuff, um, you know, the MTU part, I'm not exactly advertising that very well. Fine. Okay, that's... I think that's MT, uh, MTCP or either SL's fault. I'm not sure. But Slurp should definitely not be doing this. I mean, is it Slurp? It, 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 it has to be Slurp because it's proxying the um, TLS connections, I think. Let me just open Wireshark and confirm that. Um... What's it like with your four terabyte RAID 6? Do you feel happy? Accomplished? You do? Great. What are you going to do with all that gigabytes? Yeah, serial cables. The one good thing we have left in computers. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. So, response... I don't know what the heck is going on here. Yeah. So, it looks like it's not being split, except it's being split by slurp. Still working on that SSH problem, but you resolve that too. Um, let's see. Time to go into Slurp. <laughs> All right, no crying. Oh God. Oh no. What is this code? TCP input routine follows pages 65 to 76 of the protocol specification dated September 1981 really closely. The word you're looking for is trash. Drop TCP IP headers and TCP options. Um, w window? Header prediction. 
MSS. Okay, we have MSS. Oh. Why is it not doing this properly? TCP opt max so what about MTU does that happen anywhere okay so I do know that it's actually the window size that's being messed up here So it actually gets the ti underscore win, ti win. TCP input, is this it? Oh. Okay. Um. This is not looking good for for me. Maybe it's in TCP output. Copyright 1993. MSS. So much commented out code. Okay, we're going to have to grab this. Ask the kitty maintainer. I'm I'm heavily considering using PPP instead. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? What if we all just use PPP? And we just use that instead. You know, like PPP. PPP. Alright. Wireshark probably could do PPP better. If I can't find it in like the next, what is it, 10 minutes, then I'm going to just try and use PPP instead. No, not PPP. I was just thinking of PPP. All right. Um, TCP MSS. All right. TCP MSS. Oops. So this determines what the MSS is going to be. Do we see anything strange here? Offer. D 
This seems fine, actually. I don't see a problem here. Maybe it's not a slurp issue, but instead it's an Ether SL option. I mean, it's really difficult to figure this out because I don't have a like a Wireshark thing for the slip protocol. Um. Freedos PPP driver. Um, let's just grep for window then. TCP output. I really would think it's in TCP output. But is it in input? Let's actually check the trace. Because um, that's like our only source of looking at the actual packets we get. Um, head on over here. I've already got it open in a window, don't I? Trace. So let's see. No, it's not to do with trace, it's to do with sending. It's to do with it delivering stuff that it shouldn't be. I shouldn't be getting packets bigger than the MTU. Um, so it doesn't actually have anything to do with the MSS, it has to do with the um, window. I mean there's just so much... Okay, we're going the PPP route because I just can't do this. Um, all right. Let's find the Freedos packet drivers. Anything is possible with Freedos. Um, where did I get my packet drivers? That is a surprisingly slow, or rather um, fast to destroy loading time. Let's see if I actually have, here we go, we have CryWarner. Drivers, CryWarner. Do we have any PPP? Ether, SL. Any two thousand PLIP? Could it be PLIP? Let's find the source code, and let's actually just dump this into a directory and grab it for PPP. So we have other slip. Let's just look at slip merge. Oops. Um, 
So yeah, do we even? Is there even a DOS PPP driver? Google for this. DOS PPP driver. TV Dogs Internet Archive. Maintainers not reading bug reports. Why not? Cause. You tried copying the term info file manually and it still breaks and then what did they say in response? Copy the term info file manually, close this issue. Ah, the, uh, the pixel fed way of handling things. Nice. DOS PPP and Slipper. Contains a slip driver, plip, DOS PPP, hmm. yeah, PPP, uh, the way I'm doing it is serial. So how do I do this? Links Bobcat, what do I need that for? What do I need that for? No, you tell me now, why? EPPT? Where do I get that from? DOS PPPD What about EPPPD? Starting to remember why I didn't uh, use PPP. It might be time to dig into DOSBox. Oh, there's DOS PPP. Let's get this open. Does it have any source code? Licensing, yeah. GPL, non-commercial use, but they're only for convenience. Okay. It's non-commercial, great. All right, before I go back to slip hell, I'm also gonna quickly look at a feature in DOSBox X which I haven't gotten to work. Is this DOSBox X right? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to the any 2000 thing, real nick list. Okay, I don't know what that means, but we're gonna just quickly exit this and search this up. This could be this could be the solution. I wouldn't, oh, I'd still have to use a tunnel instead of user mode, but. Uh, okay, let's try this anyway. Is 
there like a debug option for slurp? Compile time debugging. Uh, what am I looking for? Uh, DOSBox X NE2000. Let's see this. Show me how to do this. I have legendary patience relative to you. Maybe. Okay, so let's see. Nick base. So if we head over to DOSBox X and we look at how this works, it should be in source. All right, see you later, have fun. Any 2000. Mandrake soft. Okay, so what's real Nick? PCAP, it uses PCAP? Okay. Um, that's a little strange. Do I have to run DOSBox as root? Let's see how that goes then. So, let's see the um, DOSBox X. DOS, oh no, my DOSBox configuration is here. So let's just disable that. Um, and let's start up DOSBox. And what I'm going to do is just um, edit it here. Um, what am I using? ENS4. Um, NE2000, Nick Base, Nick IQ. Okay. Okay. NE2000. Um, NE2000. Let me just save the configuration. Configuration, save. Um, DOSBox, DOBOX, DOBOT, I don't know how to pronounce something that has a two in it. You know, you often think about English, all the problems it has. At least we don't put numbers in the middle of words. You know, that's nice, that's a nice have. So let's just copy that and that's not going to work because it closed the window. So and once you close the window in Linux, everything's gone from it. It doesn't exist anymore. Or how do you even clip things? All right. So Let's do dosbox.sh and let's just scroll up to see what it says about the NE2000. Couldn't connect to remote host. Is that it? I don't think I'm blind, but 
I'm not seeing anything here about the NE2000. Uh, SDLNet TCP open, is that it? Yeah, it's enabled. Um, so this isn't very helpful. Let's pursue a little bit. Let's see if we can find the NE2000 driver. Drivers NE2000. Okay. Um, and let's shove that in our C drive and see how that goes. We might have to tell SSL to unload itself, which is fine. Okay, SL.com uninstall, oops, uninstall. Um, any 2000 um, and so uh, I think it was packet interrupt three I don't know what int level is Um, okay, so let me just try, look, let me read up my uh, FD order then. Um, does this have other SL? Okay, so let's try this. Um, any T thousand, sorry, six, eight, four, three, F eight. Does that work? Do we have any output here? Tried to activate hardware handshake. Run any2000.com. Is that part of MTCP? Let's just grab that then. And uh, W get it into this directory. And let's close. I already have it. any 2000com dot one. All right, other sl dot com new any 2000 dot com. Um, they are different sizes, so let's just rename this as I know dot old dot com, and this one can be dot com okay is that the same thing it looks like it default arguments shown below okay so it actually is the same thing 33 3300 does that work see so that isn't working mm. 
let's actually copy a lot of this. Um, here. And my real nick is ENS3, I believe. ENS4. Yep. That is what it is. Um, so let's just close DOSBox. Um, and let's run uh, add a slip uninstall and then any 2000. Three, or 300. That doesn't look correct because it says the Ethernet address is something like something ridiculous like that. Um, and it doesn't look like we're able to do DNS lookups, although that could just be because I have it set to the wrong server. Um, so we'll just let that go for a second. It needs DOSBox to run as root. I really don't want to do that though, but we'll do that just for testing. Um, okay, sudo dosbox.shell. Um, oh, that doesn't work well, really well at all. Um, I'm not sure why. So that might actually just not be an option. But uh, we do have QMU to brighten our day up. However, I broke that. So we'll have to see next time. What we might actually do is look at the uh, QMU stuff. So let's go back to our DOSBox configuration and just wipe, oops wipe this out because we're not using it and we'll go back to our slurp we'll open up slurp because slurp gonna slurp oh it's already open um one thing interesting is that i am setting the mtu to 1500 there but surely that wouldn't be the issue what we will do is we will look at QMU's slurp um, code. And we'll see how that goes. Slurp, slurp. Now does that include slurp or is this the actual slurp code? net slurp in it. So slurp doesn't include something. Net slurp. Lib slurp. Okay. Lib slurp? Alright. Um, slurp. That's an external thing. Why can't I click it? What is that? GitHub? Why? What is that? All right, can I go to Git modules? All right, what is the slurp? Lib slurp. I can't click that either. Why would I be able to? All right, lib slurp. What does lib slurp do? Of course, I can't. Can I browse it at least? No. 
please. All right, can I clone it? What? Slurp. Mirror, uh, mirror of GitLab. So that's somewhere else, is it? Is it over here? A general purpose TCP IP emulator. All right. It's an able JavaScript for this and we'll have a look. So let's go to source here. And let's look at the history and see if we can find anything about MTU or window sizes. Now, eventually it would be good if DOSBox X used libslurp. That would solve so many of my problems. Oh, that would be so good. Oh, imagine that. Imagine having libslurp in DOSBox. Lib VD E slurp, what's that for? So this wraps it in a library. All right. I just want, I just want slurp. Do we have any slurp? No. All right. To search the issues. Maybe someone's. Please just add slurp. It shouldn't be that hard in theory to add slurp, right? All right. Allow custom MTU. Uh, let's... That's all? Oh, they didn't bring out the version history. Gotcha. All right, so let's find the QMU source code. QMU.git, it should be. Um... It would probably be like version 4.20. That would have slurp in it, wouldn't it? Slurp. History. No, 500. All right, so maybe it was in version something else. No, no, I just want my slurp. Version 3.1 point something. Does that have slurp in it? No, it doesn't. It never does. Tags, okay. Version 3. 3.1, 3 3.11, 3, 3, 3, slurp, 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 it's here, oh, okay, history, 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 log, No, that's not it. I want the slurp log. I want a log of slurp. I might just have to clone, clone it. Clone. 
copy it. Did I already? No. Let's just clone it on the desktop then. I wonder if it actually keeps the serial stuff in it. I don't know. I mean, if I can get the any 2000 stuff to work, then I could possibly just use Slurp for that instead. Who knows? Come on, QMU. I could browse it on GitHub. And it was version 3 something. It's not 3.1, I don't think. Is it 4? Let's just check out the tree one of these should have slurp there we go and then let's go through the history for anything obviously fixing the issues that I have Mm-hmm. Has this cloned yet? Okay, good. Get dog slap. So he's actually no, so let's see TCP. Some look up. Wow, is this it? No. Getting close. MSS. Window. Um, let's just head into the slurp directory then. Actually, we'll just do a slurp. So let's do window. Okay, back we go here. So down here. I just source code formatting. Oh my god, it's just not useful at all. Does QMU have this issue? Um, it might. 
All right, so we have a freaking headache here. Um, Slurp just sends as much as it can. And I think that's because we haven't set the MTU in Slurp. So what we're going to do is quit that. MTU 68. What MTU was I using before in my DOS box? Um, DOS C dev bot.cpp. Sixty-eight. All right. So let's set the MTU to sixty-eight. Good. Um, run slurp. Run DOSBox. And that doesn't do anything. MTU option is too small. Well, I respectfully disagree. Let's have a look where it says that. If send window length is too small, there is data to transmit. What? It doesn't have that string? How's it saying that then? Option value is too small. All right, so that's weird. Let's find MTU min re. What's min R? Oops. 128. Fine. Whatever. Transfer, and there's also MRU. Am I even doing the byte configuration option? Okay, and then we do slurp RC. 128 and then let's start slurp and then we'll have to reboot DOSBox and then we'll see how this goes why is MRU still at 500 Is that a PPP thing? It doesn't look like it affects slip. MRU. Set MRU. If MRU. So I've done that wrong. 
And someone has started chainsawing again. Slurp. Alright, so let's quit that. Start slurp. Um, kill all slurp. Um, Ellis of breath one, two, three, four. What's using one, two, three, four? Nothing. What are we running? Doesn't look like we're running slurp. Okay, so DOS box time. But let's run our quick netcat. Um, password is password. I will always forget that for some reason because it's not in my muscle memory. Hmm. Then let's do um, netcat. And let's do bot. Let's see if it's really going to work properly. One one one. So. We have data of eight eight. Sure. Um, one 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 two two. Wait. One two three four five six seven eight nine ten. Two three four five six seven eight. One two three four five six seven eight. Nine ten. And that just was too much, I guess. because it's accepting some packet that it shouldn't be accepting because the window size is it really jumping to the window size even if the window size is bigger than uh, okay let's just try half of that good data length so double that nope I wonder if I'm going to rage quit today. That'd be weird. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's definitely more than. Have I just been counting wrong? That'd be good. Okay. Come on, quit. Quit, quit, quit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope. All right. So, evidently, the MTU of 128 is not correctly working. I uh, have no clue why this is. Perhaps I'm calculating it wrong. Perhaps not. Perhaps I have to set it in my MTCP configuration.
maybe the packet size needs to be bigger because I had to add 14 before. That might be it. Hundred twenty-eight plus fourteen. Um, I think that was packet dot obj that needs to be remade. So let's just remake that and relink it and see how that goes. So let's go back to here. And then let's try sending a big long line of data. Oh, uh, it's only 82. 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. I miscounted. Um. Okay. Now, what if I advertise a bigger MSS? Um, that would be in TCP dot TCP, TCP dot CPP MSS MSS to advertise. Let's see. That is actually multiplying by two. So, what if? Uh, see, the problem is that I have to know both the M, the MTU of slurp and the MTU of this. Why would I need to do that? So slurp is doing some funny business. Um, I think it might actually just be readjusting packets or something. I'm not quite sure. But we have an MT of 128 here. We have fragmentation working. Slurp will... Will this advertise that if I go to the um, code, will it actually find the MTU? So if we go to desktop and we look at the slip code, will it actually have um, merge slip or is it slip? Yeah, we'll actually figure out the MTU here. Will detect it? No. So, oops. Giant. So, what is giant set to? That'd be in defs.asm. Giant. Okay, so Ender SL is going to always take in the largest package. So packet. So let's think about this. We have multiple MTUs and only the endpoint should matter. But slurp 
is ignoring the NP the MPU. How uh, is MRU a thing? Should I be setting that? Is that the missing piece of the puzzle? No, um, okay, so so that M two does not include it, the size of the Ethernet. bug all right so mtcp will take in packets larger than its mtu that's problem number one because slurp will send in packets larger than the mtu so that should be an error um, bug two is that slurp will resize packets um, to fit its MTU according to I think that's what's happening. To fit the TCP window size. So this means if my MTU is not the same as Slurp's MTU, um, well, okay, what am I thinking of? That's like two bugs right there. I guess. I mean, is the second one really a bug? I don't know. It's terminating the TCP connection, so it should be able to do whatever it wants. So I'll just put in issue two will die. So that's a bug I actually have to fix there. Issue, let's put that there. Set the MTU here to equal slurps MTU to avoid um, Packets resized. Resize to the TCP window size and outside and outside MTCP's packet size. Okay, so that seems to be the issue kind of solved. This means you can't output packets that you put in. Let's see. 
Uh, I can't spell receive. Can't um, echo packets that you receive as they might be too big for your end here. As they can be too big for your end here. So that's issue, that's an actual bug that needs to be fixed. Um, it should not be pulling in packets that are too big or it, it should rather just be dropping them. Although with TCP, if it drops them, then it can't acknowledge it, can it? So it's actually unable to do it. So it actually isn't hanging MTCP will hang when dropping packets larger than its MTP, MTU. This is because it can't act large. Can't act these packets and thus the stream hangs. Instead, it should reset or something. So that's the actual bug there. Um, if we get into a condition where MTCP uh, gets a packet larger than it's supposed to, um, then it really should quit because in our case it's a TCP packet and dropping that just kills, kills it. It can't act it. That's the end of the stream, it's gone. And that's not too big of a problem Um, another issue is that slurp terminates the um, TCP connection and will and will um, repack the TCP stream. Ignoring it. All right. Yeah. So it is a bug that slurp. According to the TCP window size, ignoring the MSS and using the MTU as the maximum size. This equals slurps MTU to avoid slurp making packets This is a complicated bug. Slurp terminates the TCP connection and will. Sorry, that should be proxies. And will repack the TCP according to the TCP window size four times the MSS, which can be larger than the MTU. MSS. Ignoring the MSS and using its own MT as the cap rather than the MSS. So that's a bug too. That shouldn't be happening. Um, work around set so NTC. MTU to slurps MTU to avoid slurp making packets uh, 
um, combined issue using a small M2 in MTCP. Using a smaller MTU in MTCP, then slurp. MTCP. Will cause, will cause the TCP cause the window to be set to something larger than its MTU. And cause slurp to send packets the size of its MTU. Larger than ours. Was to avoid slurp making packets too large for our users. Oh my god, that's terrible. And I hate it. 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 Um, so I don't know what the hell we're going to do here. But that might be enough for today. Um, I thought I was going to get line buffering today, but I guess I got everything else. So I'm done. I'm finished. See you later, everyone.